Welcome to the Short Circuit Podcast alongside the co-founder of the season ticket, Derek Shelby. I'm Kate Constable, and we are joined today by MBA skills trainer, Tyler Ralph. Tyler, thanks for joining us today. How's it going? I'm good. How are you guys? Appreciate you having me. We're good. Uh, so you have quite the resume when it comes to athletes that you've trained, uh, athletes in the NBA. How did all of this come about for you? Um, well, it's crazy because actually uh, the guy on this call, Derek Shelby, um, I moved from New York about 11 years ago to Dallas, Texas. Um, and I was just kind of doing skills over at this uh, facility in, um, in Dallas. And uh, Derek brought his son and then said, hey, man, there's this kid out here named Julius Randall, you know, who um, you know, I think could benefit from this. And so I went over, worked out Jew and, and, um, and then that's kind of how everything had started for me. So, you know, Derek deserves a lot of credit, um, you know, for, for being, you know, just the guy he is and being able to, you know, let me work out Jew. And then the relationship started with Julius and, um, you know, I just, you know, I just put my head down and worked hard and um, tried to do it the right way out here in Dallas. And, and you know, God bless me in, in a multitude of ways uh, along the path. Derek, how do you feel about um, Tyler crediting his career to, um, to you helping start it off? No, I'm not taking any credit for that. You know, Tyler's put in all the work. <laughs> You know, um, he really, really works, you know, so it's just a pleasure to have you on this first podcast with us for the short circuit. And um, uh, I'm definitely not taking any credit for Tyler. <laughs> He's done a great job in building his uh, his brand and building, building his platform. I do have some questions for you, though, Tyler. Um, a lot yeah. of people, when you get into trainers, you know, a lot of people um, necessarily don't know the background of the trainer. So as mm-hmm. we say that not only did you do you do this, you also did this. So tell us about Tyler Ruff, the basketball player, because no one knows the basketball player, Tyler Ruff. Talk to us about that a little bit. Uh, yeah, I mean, it started at a young age. Um, you know, my mom played professional basketball. Um, you know, my dad played college football, but, you know, had, had scholarship offers to play college basketball also. Um, my godmother um, was uh, the coach of the Cleveland Rockers, which back then was uh, the WNBA when it first had started. Um, you know, so I had a lot of knowledge around me at the time, um, you know, at a young age. And I was just kind of around it and I fell in love with it at a young age. Um, I played a lot. Um, and by playing a lot, I mean, I played, you know, at a young age, probably like six, six hours a day. Um, you know, and then I was, I grew early. So I was 5'10 in seventh grade, um, which, you know, I was skilled kind of the same way I'm now. So I was, I was probably one of the better seventh graders in the country at the time. Um, you know, and then I played varsity in eighth grade, um, you know, for the defending state championship or champions in our area. Um, you know, and that's kind of where it kicked off and, you know, people started noticing, um, you know, who I was, um, you know, and then, you know, all that happened. Um, my team ended up being ranked number two in the country my senior year uh, behind LeBron James, um, you know, and it was kind of, it was just a roller coaster because it was like we were on this roller coaster with him um, and we were chasing him. And, um, you know, it's funny because they did that that Wooten thing, and that was who we beat Coach Wooten in the championship of Beach Ball Classic. Okay. Um, and that was our high school team's coming out party nationally because we were just, you know, where I'm from, we don't really do that. Um, you know, but we were able to compete nationally. We had, you know, I think 61 guys on our team, which were all neighborhood kids, which made – you know, our situation cool. Um, you know, we weren't kids from all over the place. We were kids that were, you know, we're just around the block, you know, and, and kind of grew up together. And now we're, you know, on this national high school stage and it made it really cool. Um, and then you're, you know, you're, you're around LeBron James kind of, cause we did the primetime shootout 
you know, and Carmelo and Braun played before us um, and we played Sebastian Telefair, um, you know, so it made it cool. And then, you know, I was blessed enough to, to get voted Mr. Basketball of the state of New York my senior year. Um, we won the state championship. Um, you know, I was MVP of the state championship. And then, um, you know, had Clemson, Pittsburgh, uh, Rhode Island, uh, South Florida, um, you know, uh, West Virginia. And then I committed early my junior year. And, you know, we had a great senior year. So it was kind of like, you know, Arizona called and I had a couple of the, you know, the higher schools call. And, you know, I stuck with my situation at West Virginia um, and then went and played with uh, for Coach Beeline at West Virginia. Um, you know, and then I was a young kid, thought I was better than I was. You know, and I think that's the kind of the message that I that I try to I use what I learned mm -hmm. to help kids. You know, I don't try to hide what happened in my life. Um, you know, so I just kind of decided to move on with the Bonnies. And then, you know, from what happened at Bonnies, I kind of got injured a lot, um, got healthy my senior year. I actually had a good senior year. I was like 15 and, and four and. Went to New York City, was training, had um, an offer in Iceland and Germany, and I decided I was going to go to um, Iceland, to Reykjavik, and I ripped my ankle apart one week before. Um, and, uh, you know, bags were packed. I'll never forget it. Like, I walked in the room on crutches, and my bags were packed and everything. And that, you know, that was it. Went back to Bonnie's um, and kind of rehabbed was my goal. And then kind of started working out and the kids started, the guys would work out with me. And, you know, the guys were like, Hey man, like we're really getting better. Um, you know, a couple guys had all conference seasons. Um, and I kind of just fell in love with watching other players get better. Um, and at that point, my passion for basketball kind of switched lanes. It was, you know, I had my time and, you know, I loved it. Um, you know, but I really enjoyed pushing players and seeing them succeed. And, you know, that's kind of how I got into it. Yeah, that's an amazing story. A lot of people don't know your background. I want to make sure that you were able to articulate that to other, everybody who follows you and guys that you train. I mean, player of the year in New York, that's not like you won the rec league, right? I mean, that's like a big, big deal. You know, there's a, there's a, a list of a lot of phenomenal people that were – New York State Player of the Year, you know. So kudos goes out to you and all your hard work. And hey, I'm glad you came to Dallas because you really have came here and helped change a lot of lives. You know, um, yeah, it's been fun. I don't. You, your grind is different than, than a lot of people I've seen in that business, and uh, that's all credit to your hard work and your upbringing. Uh, let's talk about um, um, pros you've trained because you've trained just as many WNBA players as you've trained. Mm -hmm. NBA players talk, talk about that a little bit yeah I mean I first started so it's weird um you know two girls that we had in the gym this summer Diamond Shields and Taya Cooper um were actually girls I met when they were in eighth grade wow um when I kind of had first started doing what I was what I was doing and I met them in eighth grade and and we just kind of developed like a, a relationship and, um, you know, now they come back in the summers and we'll, you know, come back for a week here, week there and train. And then, um, you know, we, uh, we have a Rike Abumawali that comes in and trains. Um, and then, you know, like yesterday, Erica Wheeler, who was, you know, an all-star that, um, or MVP of the all-star game, I think last year, mm -hmm. um, you know, was in and, and it's cool, man, because I kind of like I start I didn't start on the girl side. You know, I, I did. I started on the boy side with Bonaventure and then I went and trained University of Alabama. And then I kind of made my way down through okay. Alabama to Texas, um, okay. you know, but like Naya Green, you remember her is is probably the first player I had in third grade. And, you know, she ended up she was already crazy talented, but, you know, she ended up being a McDonald's all American and now she's at Duke. Um, you know, so I've always liked training the girl side. Um, I think they, they listen, they're, you know, they're fun to work with. Um, you know, there's not as many egos on that side of it. And, uh, 
Yeah, so I've always enjoyed it, man. And it's been a, it's been cool to train the, you know, some of the best women in the world. Tyler, you talk about being with these women since girls, since they were in eighth grade and, and training them up until now. So that's a testament to you as a trainer that they've stuck with you this entire time. What is it about your training style that separates you from other trainers out there? Um, I think the first thing is, is it's, it's more about like basketball is important. Um, you know, obviously that's why they come to me is they want to get better at basketball, but I think there's gotta be, they gotta trust you. They gotta know you care. Um, and I think that's what me and my staff do a really good job of. Um, you know, we develop relationships. It's not like, you know, come in the door and you're out the door. Um, you know, it's, it's sit, talk, um, you know, you joke. It's almost like if you walk in our gym, it's that locker room feel that you had when, when you were a young kid. Um, and I think that's what makes it special. Um, you know, I, I think caring, um, and your passion goes a long way in this business. Cause a lot of times these elite athletes, um, struggle finding people who really want what's best for them. Um, you know, I think too many people look out for themselves and see themselves gaining off athletes. Uh, you know, so I think that's why I like a lot of the, you know, the pro guys and, and the pro women and, and even like these elite high school kids, I, I think they realize like, you know, I, I just, I like basketball. I mean, I like, I love basketball. I enjoy watching people succeed and, um, you know, I just enjoy working hard and, and seeing seeing kids' dreams come true, really. Let, let me ask you this. You know, I met you years and years ago when you were working at a, at a gym. And, and just in this last year, year and a half, you've opened what we call the, the, the lab. Yeah. The type of lab. So I watched you over the years work your, your ass off. And how did it feel when you got the keys to your own facility? How did it feel? Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm one of those people that, you know, I'm a lot like you. Like me and him are kind of the same. I think that's why we're so close. You know, it happens and then it's what's next. So as much as like I sat there and I was like, this is cool. It was like, all right, we got to get to work now. So I, didn't, I don't know if I enjoyed it like I should have, you know, that was kind of my goal for my whole life was to, or since I started this was to open my own gym, um, you know, but it was the same thing. Like when, you know, I texted you about the all-star, it was like, yeah, cool. Let's keep it moving, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, I think that's what it's got. It's gotta be. I think I've learned a little bit to kind of like, you know, appreciate things, but at the end of the day, you know, the gym is there now it's, you know, it's time to get, to get kids better. And now it's, it's time to, you know, see what else we can do and, and, and stuff like that. So, you know, I think it was cool. Um, and it was a cool moment, you know, but I really, I mean, I really kind of just was like, all right, well, what's next type thing. And, and that's just kind of how I was, I've always been. Don't, don't ever be afraid to stop and um, congratulate yourself, right? Um, I think you should really try to, um, every time you get a win, it's, it's okay to pat yourself on the back. I know you're so focused on what's next, what's next, but you know, you've, done a, you've done a phenomenal job in this community um, and you've helped thousands and thousands of kids um, get better. And by them getting better, that, that's got them scholarships to colleges and starting on their high school varsity team. And even some have reached ultimate goal, which is playing in the NBA or WNBA. Um, tell me about driven training. Um, I know that's a platform. That, is that more of an online platform? How do, how do we get to driven training? So we had, so actually driven training is, isn't even mine anymore. I, I, we okay. started that way back. Um, and then I started that with one of my friends, Damon Altizer, who's out okay. in Virginia. And then we gave that to him. And then, okay. you know, I kind of went with my brand. Um, and then the hoop dynamic, which is the online stuff. Um, okay, that's it. Okay, you know, is kind of what we do. And then, yeah, how, I mean, how do we get to hoop dynamic? What what is that? What is that website? How can we get people to go check? It yeah, out? it's just www.hoopdynamic.com, and it's just okay. 
you know, kids can go on there and, and see videos and we do IQ stuff. We do anything from first grade all the way up. And, you know, um, you know, there's stuff on our, that we do with our pros on there. Like you can see you working out a little bit here and there. So it's, it's a cool platform, man. And, you know, Mike Timmons has done a great job helping me with that. I guess that. Um, uh, real quick, go ahead, go ahead, Kate. Um, the season ticket and the circuit, we work with high school athletes, uh, grassroots players. At what age do people need to start thinking about working with a skills trainer if they want to get to the next level? Uh, I mean, it's changed. You know, I, I know I'm, I'm, I'm expecting you to say like, yeah. third grade. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, you take my son, for example, I mean, he's, you know, he's been doing it since really preschool. Um, that and that's a little different cause he's around it. Right. Um, you know, so he kind of just hops in, he, he, you know, does it. Uh, but you know, we start early, we start kindergarten. So, I mean, we have kindergartners like yesterday, we had kindergartners come through and, um, you know, it's really up to the kids, to be honest. Um, you know, because if the kids don't want it, they're not going to really, like, want to get better. Um, you know, so there's kids that, you know, you get your kids that love being in there for the majority, but then you also get, like, the little kids that are like, yo, what is this <laughs> type thing? Um, yeah, but I, I think, like, at any age, you know, um, I mean, if you want to be really good, though, and you really want, like, you want to play in college, mm -hmm. I mean, you better find somebody to work with. Um, that's good. And, and that can teach you how to get to that next level, because there is levels, um, you know, and, and if you want to play in college, it's a whole different beast than, than high school. Yeah, let me ask you this. What, what advice would you give a parent who has a young child that wants to play basketball, what advice would you give a parent on how to find the right trainer? Because I just feel that finding the right trainer fit is similar to a high school athlete trying to find the right collegiate fit. Can you speak on that? Yeah. What kind of advice would you give a parent looking for the right fit for a trainer? Um, I mean, I mean, you and me both know, D, like, I mean, since I've been out here, the trainer market is insane. I mean, there's probably, when I got out here, there's what, three maybe, I think, <laughs> maybe. Now there's, you know, maybe 3,000, 30,000. I don't even know how many there are. Um, so I think the first thing is, is, is knowledge. And I think that comes from the parents. I think the parents, you know, you got to do your research. Um, you know, you got to understand, like, who knows what they're talking about and who doesn't. Um, and there's a very fine line between it, to be honest. Like, um, you know, I think everybody has their hustle, but other pe people do it differently. Um, you know, like, this is my full-time job. I watch film all day. Um, you know, I try to create workouts all day, you know, and, and that's kind of what I do. Um, you know, but, but I think it's, it's the same thing. I think you're, you hit it right on the head is it's just like choosing a college, you know, cause it's important. If the kid wants to be really good, it's important. Um, you know, and, and there's a lot of good, you know, guys out here, you know, Tim Martin, I think is really good, you know, in the DFW area. And then, you know, I think the guy that, you know, works with us, I think Barrington Stevens um, continues to, to elevate, you know, who he is as a skills trainer. And then, you know, we got the other one, you know, who just came in is in Jawan, who coached at, you know, D2 level and, um, you know, put countless hours in a watching film. And, and, you know, so it takes a lot of time. Basketball is a complex sport. <laughs> you know, I think there's a lot of that goes into it um, compared to, you know, other sports. Um, you know, you, you can be as skilled as you want to be in basketball. And that's kind of why I fell in love with that as a young kid. So I'm kind of fascinated by that because there are so many players and players that you've worked with that have God given talent. They are going to be good regardless of if they work with a trainer or not, they just have that talent, but working with the trainer, you're able to take them to the next level. How do you take a player from good to great? I mean, it always depends on, you know, what age a kid is. I think a lot, um, you know, there's, there's some really, we've had some really, we have 
really good kids coming through the gym every day, um, all types of ages, and Noah Shelby, Derek Sun being one of them. Um, and I think it's showing the kids how to work. You know, you say you want to play at this level, and that's kind of like the first thing you, you ask is like where you want to go to. And they're like, well, they always want to say, I want to play in the NBA. So right when they say that, it's like, all right, well, you know, you got to listen or, or you're not going to have a chance. Um, you know, we got some talented, like Julius was a talented kid, um, you know, but his work ethic sets him apart. And that's why he is, you know, an all-star and, and one of the better players and power forwards in the league. And um, he works and he works relentlessly. Um, and that's what we try to instill in these young kids. And it's, and it's, it's really cool. Cause you know, I've been blessed to be around Julius Randles and, and guys like that, where I can say to Noah Shelby and, and these other kids, Hey man, like this is what he does. And he's six, nine, two fifty. You're not that. So if you want to even catch him, you got to work this much harder. Um, so I think work ethic is the number one thing that, when kids come in my gym, they realize, you know, what it's like. It's intense. It's, it's high pace. It's fast. Like we don't mess around, um, you know, and, and you learn how to work really. I have uh, one, one final question. Um, you have a son mm -hmm. and, you know, I, uh, I had the um, privilege to coach my son from a young age until I gave him, gave him away. But you know this business really, really well. Um, you know the pro side, you know the collegiate side, you know the AAU side, you know the training side. Um, are you ready for this when it comes to your son coming up in this, in this, in this community and in, in this what we call basketball world? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, not at all. Because it's way different than when I played. It's, it's, and especially Dallas. Yeah. You know, I think you, you got your, I mean, you know, Dallas is, Dallas has become one of the best cities in the country as far as basketball goes. But when, with that comes, you know, all the politics, all the other stuff that comes with, you know, this game at a young age. And, you know, I think for me, it's just a fight between, um, you know, him being my son, but him just him being his own, own own person. Like if he wants to play basketball, he can, you know, obviously, I mean, I, I would love him to play and I push him and I, sometimes I probably push him harder than I should. Um, you know, but at the end of the day, he's he's his own kid. And um, the, the biggest fear I have with him is the unneeded pressure. Um, you know what I mean? And and that's my biggest fear as a father. Um, I can care less what happens with basketball. I want him to find something that he loves to do and that he's passionate about and that he works hard. It could be soccer. It could be, you know, uh, baseball or, or whatever else. I mean, he could, I don't shoot, be an engineer, you know, you'll make way more money than, than we make. Um, you know, so I think it's about finding a passion. Um, I, and I think that's the biggest thing, even with these kids that come in the gym, you may not play in the NBA. But if you learn how to be passionate about something, you learn how to work at something, it translates to life. Um, yeah. And that's that's the biggest thing. And that's kind of what I want him to understand is work hard at something, you know, chase your goals. You're going to fail. Um, but get back up, punch again and keep going until, you know, basketball or whatever you decide to do, you know, says, hey, man, it's you know, it's over or whatever. And then and then you take those those same characteristics to you know, to life and, and, um, you know, and, and that's, I think that's, that's where I'm trying to go, man. I'm not, you know, it's funny because me and Olivia talked yesterday about me coaching Theo because he's been asking <laughs> and, uh, and I'm struggling, you know what I mean? I'm just like, Oh man, you know, um, so we'll see, man, but yeah, I don't think I'm ready for it. But I hope, hopefully I do enough, you know, good enough. And I've had, you know, like I've watched you with Noah and I've, I've watched, I've watched, you know. So I think I have have some good, um, you know, my father, I think, did a really good job um, with me. And so I've watched, I've learned, you know, I've taken notes and, and I know who not to be and, and I know who I want to try to be. Yeah.
Yeah. Well, Tyler, we could keep going on and on with questions for you all day, but I think that's a great note to end on um, finding your passion and, and going after it. So we'll stop yeah. there, but thank you so much for your time today. We really appreciate it. I appreciate you having me. I've had fun.